Welcome to the Richesson Reverse Engineering Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to power a smart meter off of 12 volts instead of 240. Up until now, I've been putting the smart meters in this Faraday cage, and back here, I have a 240 volt converter. So it takes 120 volts, it converts it to 240. I take the smart meters, I stick them inside this Faraday cage, and I plug them into this back box. So if you take a look at a smart meter, I just drop it inside this thing. It runs it on 240. The challenge with that is, is if I want to hook up JTAG to this port, solder a connector on there and everything in the following videos so we can try to dump the firmware using the glitching techniques, having it hooked up to 240, then trying to hook it up to a computer over USB, it can blow the whole thing up. It's just, you know, it's not fun experimenting with this stuff when it's on 240 volts. So I figured out how to power it off of 12 volts, but you can't just feed 12 volts into the board. So I'll show you a board here that, that kind of met uh, a bad fate. You can see there's some kind of explodey looking marks there as I clipped something to the wrong place while it was hooked up to 240. And so what I wanted to do is feed in some voltage. It probably runs on 3.3 volts and some other voltage levels that these different processors run on. And I want to feed that in, um, but you know, without having to do the 240. So I looked at these capacitors over here. So if you take a look at this part of the circuit right here, you see kind of high voltage comes in here and then it comes over through this part, it gets rectified, it comes through a transformer. And then ultimately these two look like uh, a couple big capacitors that are you know smoothing everything out before it comes down to a lot of a lot of voltage regulating circuitry down here and then across and so I just took a look at these capacitors and one 16 volts and the other is 32 volts I believe and so I kind of went by the 75 percent rule and that's if the if the this capacitor is 16 volts and we say 75 percent of the rating puts it at 12 volts they're probably not going to put in more than about 12 volts so I just fed 12 volts DC into there. And so that you can see here. So nice power supply. I can current limit it and feed in the voltage. So I'll turn it off. We'll see the smart meter is off here. And I'll turn it back on. Okay, it's on now. And what you'll see is the screen comes on, but it never leaves this kind of all the segments are on the, the way it's sitting here. And so what I realized is it took quite a bit of reading some of the data sheets of this um, this part here, this Teridian, this is what's actually measuring the voltage that's coming in and doing the actual metering. And then this chip down here is what's doing the mesh networking and everything else. And so this Teridian chip, if it doesn't detect a line voltage, if it doesn't see the 60 hertz sine wave that's coming in, it basically holds everything in reset so it doesn't let this thing turn on and the screen stays the way it was. So. So you can see from this little wire that's right here, what I had to do was basically feed in a small 60 hertz sine wave. After all this resistor dividing goes on from 240 volts down, it ends up at basically a three volt signal right here with a tiny little sine wave on top of that. And so what that looks like is, if I turn it back on over here, enable the output, I have just a 600 millivolt peak to peak on top of about a 2.9, I added a three volts, I'll show you what that lets you adjust. So you see this little sine wave, and so if this is zero volts, this is three, and then this little tiny 600 millivolt sine wave is riding on top. And when you turn that on, you can see it lets the meter boot. If I turn that signal off, you see it goes right back into that reset state, and then I turn it on again, and it detects it. You see this little thing come down here, it starts booting up, and then it runs uh, no problem. And so if I put it into a little special test mode, okay, the screwdriver is magnetized, so up at the top of the meter here, if I put it right here, we'll see it go to this Alt mode, and I can cycle through some menu settings, and this 105 shows us what it thinks the line voltage is. And so if I just change this little voltage over here, you will see the line voltage go up. 
and that's because it's basically if you know if it went at the end of that whole resistor divider network down um, the this tiny little voltage going up and down is a representation of that much larger voltage just divided down to this small voltage so it lets us set this if I were to change the 60 Hertz part of the sine wave probably some other part of this meter would pick that up as a, a variation in the uh, in the distribution network that would be feeding this meter and so now that I have that figured out I can then power this meter off of 12 volts like we see here so it's safe it's not running off of 240 right here where I'm worried about blowing everything up and then next we'll solder some JTAG connectors on here and uh, there's a bunch of little resistors kind of spoiler alert that I got to try to find and everything so we'll show that in the next video and see if we can't program one of these over JTAG. Hey thanks for watching.